what are the major problems with animal foods? Uh, animal foods, the problem, maybe the major problem with animal foods is that we are not designed as an animal food eater. Oh, that's where it all starts. You probably heard the cliches about the teeth and, and the claws. And, you know, there are all kinds of things that you can put us into a category of being an herbivorous animal. I mean, everything about us is herbivorous. So the main problem with eating uh, cat food, Tyrannosaurus rex food, is that uh, it's the wrong food for people. Likewise, you don't want to raise your cat on baked potatoes. The Humane Society would be after you because that would be the wrong diet for a cat. So we start out in life and dairy foods are a big push early in life uh, with the idea that we can live on a milk designed for a cow. People get into big trouble because of that. Uh, you wouldn't feed human breast milk to a calf, would you? No, you get arrested. Calf would end up malnourished. Yeah, so that's the, that's the major problem. And then you go on from there I would say the next issue is the availability of this rich food. Uh, because of, as I mentioned, modern transportation, because of uh, the harnessing of fossil fuels, we, we have transportation that is, uh, was once unimaginable. And as a result, we can get all this animal food to people. So um, we could go into some specifics, like we say, well, eat animal food has no dietary fiber and you know you need fiber at least for your bowels. And you can say that no, animal foods do not contain carbohydrate. There, there are exceptions. One is milk, has some carbohydrate, but the cow gets that carbohydrate from the grass blades. Not from, the cow can't make carbohydrate. And the honeybee, and the honeybee of course gets uh, its uh, sweetness from the nectar of uh, the flower. So really no animal makes carbohydrate at all and you need carbohydrate for activity. We could pick on things with animal foods such as cholesterol. Uh, only animal foods contain a significant amount of cholesterol. We could talk about the, uh, the bioaccumulation of pesticides and other environmental chemicals. As you move up the food chain to the animal foods, you end up concentrating your, your poisons in your environment thousands fold. And then we could also discuss the fact that uh, we can catch animal diseases. Yeah, you know, you, you read about uh, E. coli and little children getting poisoned by E. coli on the apples up in, up in the Seattle area about 20 years ago. And you read about the, the melons in Europe a few years back that were contaminated with listeria. And so you, you, you see these newspaper articles and they don't mention they don't mention that the plants are an innocent bystander. You only get these animal diseases from other animals, like a farm worker walked through your field and pooped on your cabbage, or a cow did the same thing, or it got contaminated in the, uh, in the processing plants. So uh, animal foods will give you animal diseases, and you can get sick, very sick from these, die. And uh, whereas plants, plants, you can't catch diseases from plants. A whole different kingdom. Think about it for a minute. <clears throat> You have no friends with aphids or Dutch elm disease or tobacco mosaic virus, do you? Yeah, that's because these plant foods, uh, these plant microbes don't cross the kingdoms. Will eating a lot of cooked beans, whole grains and potatoes increase blood sugar? And have you been able to get your patient's blood sugar down following a diet like this? Yeah, we've, I've treated hundreds of diabetics and we publish scientific work on our treatment of diabetes. Uh, you have to go back and understand the basic scientific literature that was published since the early uh, 1900s. Uh, uh, Percival Hemsworth was a, the principal investigator. They did some work, for example, in 1927. He had one of his colleagues, a guy named Shirley Sweeney took uh, his medical students and fed them uh, different kinds of diets. One, he fed them a, the students a high sugar diet. It was candy and white sugar and so on. And with that kind of diet, when he checked the, uh, the glucose tolerance test, which is what happened to the glucose over the next few hours, none of the students were diabetic. And then he fed him a high fat diet. And I mean, it was really high in fat, the students, healthy medical students, and they all became diabetic. Now, Percival Hinsworth, he published the article that should have really settled the whole issue in 1940 in the British Medical Journal. And he published an article which showed that uh, you get diabetes, type two diabetes by eating a high fat diet, period. 
and all the work that's been done, scientific work that's been done since then, clearly shows that carbohydrate makes insulin work better. And you could cure type two diabetes. How often? 100% of the time. By definition, type two diabetes is a diet dependent diabetes and is curable 100% of the time. And we could go into the details on why I say that. Now, type one diabetes is a whole different disease problem, which you have to take insulin for. And uh, anyway, the idea that the idea that uh, a well-balanced diet is a good diet for somebody with diabetic diabetes and that a high carbohydrate diet is bad for them is an idea that has been propagated by many organizations, including the American Diabetic Association. And it's a diet that guarantees all diabetics will remain diabetic. Uh, 